Hey, this is episode two, why each teacher should be a Google Sheets ninja. So let's go. So here's a simple blank spreadsheet. And these cells can do a lot of amazing things if you start knowing what you're doing. If you want to put a date in here, for example, November 12th, 1955, it can recognize that date as well as start putting subsequent dates in if just by clicking and dragging it down. If November 12, 1955 was a Monday, I can take that Monday, drag it down, and know that's the next day around. Or, for example, if you type January in there, The cells are smart enough to know to auto-fill down and fill in the rest. You can start to fill in really interesting things. So if you are filling out a you know, spreadsheet of whatever data you have, let's get a year's worth of numbers in here. Getting rid of the bottom. What if I want to total those numbers up? If I hit the equal sign, it, it's already guessing what I'm trying to do. I can try to sum those up. If it doesn't give you the formula, you'll just have to click and drag what you want. It'll give you the total right there. You can also find the average. By hitting the equal sign, you'll just start typing average. Average, drag what you want to average, enter. There's the total, there's the average. There's some real simple things to do just filling this stuff in, as well as you can start to format this stuff so it looks better if you are if you are trying to share out. You can make it formatted look decent just by spending a little bit of time getting it set up correctly. Well, that's the basics. So one really great tool you can use with Google is Google Forms. So if I head back to my drive and I start making a Google Form, so here I'm in my drive. If I go to New, I, if I go to New, New, it's a little bit hidden, but a Google Form is something that you can send out and whoever gets it will fill out the form, and all that data is going to, can be organized in many different ways. So this form can be really easy to set up. Questions such as, what is your favorite color? You can have multiple choice. You can have people fill in multiple answers or select from a drop-down. They can type their own answers in. So they'll type an answer in. You can make answers required. What is your favorite number? You can even make Google check that they're putting that the answer is a number. You can even say a number that's between 0 and 100. So you can say, well, what was your score on your test, for example? And if they try to put 1 million in, you could say, okay, put, a, put an answer between 1 and 100 here. So these are really handy. You'll send it to whomever you want to send it to. You can have a collect email addresses. You can do whatever you need to do. But what that form will look like when they get it is really simple. Here's an untitled form. What is your favorite color? What is your favorite number? Submit. So if we start to we'll put an answer in here and submit it, now this form is going to start collecting responses. So over here we set up our questions. Over here we're getting our responses. And depending on how your questions are set up, if you have multiple choice questions, you can start seeing pie charts show up here. You'll start seeing line graphs. You'll start seeing all sorts of graphing show up here. That's a really quick way to see how, what your answers look like. You'll see individual answers to your question. 
you want. And you can have this sent to a spreadsheet. So creating a new spreadsheet with all of the answers to this form where you can do something with it. So if you're, if you're setting up a movie day in your classroom and you want the kids to pick the movies, you can put the movies, all right, what's your first choice, what's your second choice? Kids' names will be here. Their first choice will be here. You can just sort the sheets by their first choice. Take as many as you want and then start looking at the second choices and moving them around. It's a very handy way to be collecting. The last thing you might want to know is that over here in the form, after you send it out, if you send this to all of your students, it'll start to tell you who has not responded. And so right here in the summary, it'll say, okay, these people responded, and then out at the bottom, you can email those people who haven't responded yet. It's pretty powerful when you can say, five, five of you haven't responded yet, here are your names. Get it done. And, and it's a really quick way to get it going and collect that information that you want to collect. So those, that's basic ways to use Google Forms. Let's look at some advanced ways. So if we go back to this basic form, excuse me, if we go back to this basic sheet, and we look at the add-ons here, there are different things that you can do with these sheets. For example, Yednel Mail Merge is a mail merging program that you can use to send emails that have whatever information you have out. So if you've got a Google Form, or if you have all of your student emails in a roster on here, you can start to email it out using these add-ons. I'm not going to go in depth on how to actually send this right now, but if you go to your add-ons tab, go to get add-ons, they have videos right there showing you how to set up the Adobe Mail Merge. In short, what you'll need to do is go to your Google, your Gmail account, you'll set up a draft, that has different tags in it, and then the information will fill in where those tags are from those drafts. So, mail merging is a really handy way to send out information to parents. So if you need to send out a test score to a parent, if you have the parent email right here, kids test score right here, setting up a mail merge will blast those out for you. The last thing you can do is a add-on called AutoCraft. This is kind of like Mail Merge. It, it can email out, but it can do more in that it will create documents based on what you have set up in here. So if I set up units, like this, unit one. So here are my units. Inside of those units, there are standards. So here's standard one. Maybe there's a benchmark for all 17 of those units that I'm going to. Really quickly, I can set up a yet another mail for AutoCrat, and it will take and make a document for each one of them. So first thing I should do is put units up at the top, standard, and benchmark, just for examples. AutoCrat's very handy but it's a little bit confusing to use it first. To set it up, you'll set up a Google Doc that has the tags in it that you need. So all the formatting that you want needs to be in this document. So obviously you can have all sorts of pictures, you can have all sorts of formatting, but maybe just really large, it's gonna say unit one, going to include the unit tag. So this is what a tag looks like. Underneath, smaller, I'm going to have the standards written right here. And the benchmark. This one's going to be in red and underlined. So here is our excuse me. Here's our template. So if we're going to set up a mail merge, 
and to create 17 documents based on the one I just made, I need AutoCAD installed. It takes a moment to load. But once you get this job set up, it'll run even if you add 18, 19, 20, 21. So this is my unit packet job. The template that I'm going to use is the most recent one that will pop up. So template. Now it's trying to map everything that's in the template to what's in my columns in my spreadsheet. So in my template, I have a tag called unit. That was right here. Unit. It saw that. Now it's telling me, okay, what is what should that what should I put in there? Well, I, I named it the same. So unit goes to unit, standard goes to standard. Next. You can have it fill in the names of what you need to fill in. So I want it to say unit one dash and my name. You can have it output PDFs or Google Docs. Similarly, you can have it put all of these into one giant document, kind of like a uh, if you were making a label, it would put them all lined up in one document. This is very handy if you're doing that. I'm going to output separate documents. It's going to go into my example folder. Next. You can have it not run on certain things. So if I put something over here that says run, I can tell it, well, make sure that this column is not empty. But I'm not going to have that go right now. You can use it to email these documents that's, that come out. So we use this as a way to send missing work assignments and, and low grade announcements to parents. It says, you know, check this document to see what, info, what classes you're doing poorly in. It's very, very handy. So you'll need to have your email addresses in a column. So put those email addresses right here. Put in a subject there. You can have the student name in there if, that, if that's a tag. In this case, I'm not going to share the document. So, this is set up. Once you get good at setting these up, they get much easier and you can save a lot of time. So I'm going to run this. It's going to take this template and start feeding that information into it and making new documents as it goes along. So 17 rows will be merged. I'm going to pause it until it's done. We're almost to the end. You can see in the background, it's telling you what is going on. It's giving you a link to each one of those documents that is creating. It's over here. It'll tell you if, if it's been emailed, if it's been sent. It's got the identification numbers. It's got the URL. If I go back to my example folder, I will see that there are 17 brand new documents in here that I just created. So I, I set the name to be my unit name and then my name. I cranked out 17 documents just now. If I click inside of one, you'll see that the information from the columns was fed into the document. 13, standard 15, metro 13. That matches what I had right here. Very handy tool. So, it, learning how to use Google Sheets is definitely worth it as a teacher. I would highly recommend that everyone get good at this, practice it. The more you learn, the easier it is, and the faster you can do more. So, why did I make these videos? This video is a part of my Puzzle Should Create project. The idea is to help teachers become better teachers so that they can use their time to help kids create more. 
So the, the class that I'm, I'm running is called Innovative Arts. It's grades five through eight. The overall goal is to help kids become creators of their own type. And the six creator types we're aiming at is becoming engineers, designers, digital creators, hackers, wordsmith, or entrepreneurs. And so after a kid gets used to how to puzzle and shift and create, they're going to dive into one of those creator types and try to become and think like that kind of creator without any anyone telling them specifically what to do, but lots of help along the way and lots of resources that they can use that hopefully they're choosing to use. So that's why I'm doing this, and I hope to connect with a lot of people who are interested and would like to support or learn more or have similar passions because this is this is really something I really want to get off the ground. So there's more episodes like this at puzzleshiftcreate.com. Check it out.